do it now. How upsetting for you that Italy are not here of winning the Euros. It's heartbreaking for us all. We're missing the sights of Chiesa on this bit. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we were still recovering from the last World Cup that we didn't get in. And now we have this blast of the Euros. That is, is a unique moment, and for the Qatar team, it's more unique as well, because they play home. Not a lot of, of uh, football players they have, they have this opportunity. For example, I didn't have this opportunity, so having your World Cup in, in your home, it's priceless. And they, they're going to be a lot nervous. Uh, uh, emotional side is going to be a huge game for them. We all remember one of the best goals scored in World Cup football, your beautiful goal coming from nowhere in the final moments to get you into the semi-final. And that iconic image after those penalties of you holding the World Cup, what does it mean to have that World Cup in your hands? I don't know exactly to explain you what does it mean. I mean, it's more that, that than a cup that and, uh, winning goal if you are a striker you know you live for the goal but no it's 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 more you you really feel complete in that moment you feel wow it's happening to me for real i've been all through this journey for this amazing moment everything seemed that seems that you fly you know and uh, that you are in floating in the sky and and this is still going <laughs> man i'm enjoying it I have to ask you, a Juventus legend, your longest serving, highest scoring player of the club, your reaction to a former Juventus player, Ronaldo, his interview, his imminent apparently departure from Manchester United. How is he handling the end of his career? Your thoughts and your advice for him, because it's very hard when there's stars like you to see the end of a career. Well, I don't know why he did that in that way. For me, it's too much, but for sure, he went all in. He went all in, you know, talking about another kind of... Uh, he put every, all the pressure on him now, and this is his last World Cup. Maybe he has he thought about that. And, uh, of course, he, he was facing a very unique situation for him. He never, you know, nobody put him, you know, in a, in a challenge situation like, you know, oh, you might play, you might not. You, you, you go, I, I, maybe I'll put you in for 10 minutes or not. This is not Ronaldo way to think the football for himself. So it's a new situation. I hope we're gonna, gonna perform well to the World Cup. I hope, I, I don't like to see Ronaldo and Man United that are very close to each other uh, in this situation. I, I don't like to see it. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about that. But sometimes this is how things go. So I wish both of them a good luck to find a nicer, nicer solution than this one. We're well, sure to start on this stage. And we're coming away for the opening ceremony. I just caught you bopping to Coldplay. I caught him. I caught him. So we're ready to enjoy the opening ceremony for back, back to you. Everywhere you look right now, there is someone of that stature. Um, not just players that we were discussing on the pitch that we've all come to watch, but those who have previously entertained us uh, are milling about off the pitch. And, and, and what always fascinates me is the guys, yeah, we, we've all got our favourites, but Gary, there's one of your yeah, favourites. He, he's the first player I ever asked to swap shirts with. They, they give us lessons in Europe in the early days, in the sort of mid-90s, with uh, Del Piero, Boxic, Deschamps. Uh, Chiro Ferrara, uh, Zidane, it was the most incredible team I've ever played against, but he was playing directly on that left-hand side of a front three against me, and I was mesmerised by his quality, his intelligence, he's a brilliant player, I used to think he was, he played the game in a great spirit as well. Did you give him a kick? No. <laughs> <laughs> he played, he was, one, he was one of those that played away from you. Yeah, oh, right. It made you feel like it was a good game, but that's the, like, never got tackled anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never got near him. Did he ask for your shirt back? No. <laughs> Phil <laughs> <laughs> They've timed it better, haven't yes, you? Yeah. Local, local intelligence, that. Yeah. 
So an hour and a half before? An hour and three quarters? An hour and three quarters, that's not bad. It's still slightly early though, isn't it? Yeah, but well, they look like they've had a slow journey in, like they've yeah. enjoyed it on the way. Well, the, the, the journey that they've made to this point has lasted about six months. Yes. Well, in actual fact, Richard, the journey that the, the country's made has lasted about 12 years. I mean, yeah. they set their stall out when they got this with the Aspire Academy and, and everything. But was preparation telling, by this team, this team for this tournament. This team is, is, is based, a lot of this team are 32, 31, 30 years of age who have been in this group for a long time and, and everything has been geared to this day for this game, the opening game. And, and I agree with Gary when he's talking about nerves. I mean, these, these guys must be feeling more nervous than anybody. The pressure on them is horrendous. And I just hope they can cope with that. I mean, they've, they've coped all right in the Asian Cup. They won that two, two years ago, 2018. Yeah. And they were terrific when they beat the likes of Korea, Japan. In, in very difficult political circumstances yeah, as well. Let's not forget that. It was a blockade on there as well. Wanted conceding just the one goal along the way. It was yeah. 